everyone, welcome to this week's angling blog. Today you join me on the banks of the river and we're in search of silvers on the whip. It's been a while since uh, I've been out for the silvers. Uh, I've been doing a lot of piking on, as you've seen on the channel and it felt good last night to get the, the seat box in the hall and the silver fishing gear out. Uh, it's uh, probably about a week to go in October till we move into the um, November months where um, the fishing does get a lot harder but today there's plenty of fish topping behind me and we'll have a look at the simple setup that I'm going to use today. Apologies for the low light, I have tried moving the camera around quite a bit but it is first thing in the morning. Uh, setup for the day is my 5 metre whip and as I've said on other episodes I've had that since I was a kid. Uh, one seven line all the way through a dyno 1.25 gram uh, belge float i've got that down to a bulk of shot two number eight droppers and a size 16 hook so let's have a look at the side train the baits that we're going to use and how i'm going to approach the peg today right right so side tray i've got two pints of red maggot about a pint and a half, two pints of hemp, some tears, and what I've done last time we were out, uh, we had to pack in early and I froze the ground bait from that session. And what I've done is I've just mixed up about a quarter of a bag of, of new stuff just to freshen it up a bit. And I'm going to hold off on that. Um, I'm just going to see how the swim fishes, and if we need to ball it in. It's there to ball in. But first, I'm just going to start feeding the swim with hemp, with just a maggot on the hook, hoping that I can get onto these if the better fish move in. So let's have a look at the swim. So swim for today, that's the seat box, and that's the view. I've lined up with a tree on the far bank, and if we get head height as to where I'm going to be sat, there's the bank. So I'm going to be aiming my feed on the shadow of that tree I'm just going to start by feeding uh, a few grains of hemp with a maggot on the hook and just see how we get on the bait to start off with I'm just going to start off with a single maggot on the hook and see how we get on hemp wise I'm just going to feed a few grains every cast just to build the swim up slowly and get an idea of what's in front of me. Um, sometimes it can be very tempting to put all that in to begin with without knowing what's in front of you. But let's get an idea of what's there first and then make a decision later on in the session. But to start with, there's a few grains of hemp and a single red maggot on the hook. It's the first fish of the day. As you can see, a small fish, but that's normally how it starts off so hopefully if we continue to feed the hemp we'll get through and attract a better stamp but that's the first fish of the day it's the first slightly better roach of the day and I say still just feeding maggot to begin with and feeding hemp but as you've seen there very early fish to begin with and slightly better stamp flicking out again all about getting into a, a bit of a routine with it the floats settling and there's the bite we're about 20 minutes in and had a few bites as you've seen so a single maggot and it's all about just judging how many fish are in front of you if this continues to be like this then I'll think about you know putting a bit more bait in and maybe some ground bait but as you can see there as soon as the float is settling in them lower layers is a fish but they're just not of the size yet and like it's a gudgeon 
they're just not at the size yet where you would say to try a, a tear so flicking out a few grains of hemp and as you can see the float will settle and you've got to, this will tell you where the fish are in the swim now it's settling down to the tip and that's where the bite's been coming there's the bite so it tells me that the fish are in the lower layers and that's where I want them and that is why I'm feeding the hemp it's a heavy bait and it'll keep them down there so again the floats going down through the water settling and there's the bite and that's a slightly better roach but yeah hopefully that just gives you an idea of uh, and it's just a case of really repeating it so flick out the whip means it goes the same distance every time keep your bait in the right area watch the float and see that's come a bit higher up in the water but it's a slightly better fish and that is more of the roach that we're looking for before we start thinking about tears when we're starting to get them regular then we'll think about putting a tab on and there's the first better fish of the day it's either a hybrid or a, a skimmer bream I think it's got a bit of both in it to be honest with you but yeah just coming on the maggot and feeding the hemp uh, a lot of small fish so far but this is a good sign that there is a better stamp out there right so um, we're about an hour and a half into the session now um, we're a bit on decision time really uh, been getting plenty of bites um, small fish the odd better fish but they haven't really you know come on like I would expect um, I'm pretty sure if I fished all day we'd have a nice net at the end and we'd have a good mixed size of fish but with that, them skimmers being in the area, I'm going to try and, as you know, attract them better fish into the swim. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mix up a couple of balls with ground bait. And as you can see there, it's laced with the um, treasure particle hemp. And I'm just going to introduce a few balls. Hopefully that will go down to the bottom. We'll create a bed, draw them bream in, and we might get a few better quality fish in the swim. Uh, there's a lot there so I don't think it's going to kill it so that's the plan so there we go three balls of ground bait just loaded with hemp no maggots just hemp I'm just going to feed these into the swim and see um, what happens if we get a positive reaction then we've got plenty more to do and I'm going to continue just to drip feed hemp over the top so let's get these in So, you just seen there, you see me put the ground bait in. I'll edit the video so we have a, you know, the real time of what's happened. I've had about five bites, and then this fish has come really quickly after putting the ground bait in. And it just shows they're in the area, but you've just got to approach it the right way. And that change has certainly brought at least this bream to the net really quickly. So, I'm going to persevere and see if there's any more in the area and if you have to feed a bit more ground bait then we've got plenty but let's just fish them three balls out and see if we get any more it's in the afternoon now and it hasn't been 
really you know prolific for the bream but what we have had is a bite of chuck for the roach and at some points it's been as soon as the the float settled it's gone um, other times you've had to wait a bit longer for the bite but what it will be is a, a nice net at the end and as you can see conditions have changed uh, the blue sky from this morning has gone and it's been quite overcast and a bit of a breeze which sometimes helps the fishing but today it was certainly more consistent when there wasn't a breeze on it the toes got up which it's not a river that has a lot of toe but when it does get up it can be quite hard on the the whip to control it but when you get into this type of fishing with the roach it's all about getting into a routine so like you see there i've had two fish you just cast in feed hold it back a little bit as much as you can and there's the fish and as you can see they're right on that hemp so the the bream haven't really um, showed after that one but it's a bite of chuck for these roach it is a bite of chuck right so as you can see there just nipped up and sat with my uncle for the bit and he's also getting plenty of bites you see there every put in is a bite and great fun it has been a bite of chuck all day hasn't it it's been yeah. Non stop. <laughs> See, them bream have been a bit elusive, but when you're getting as fish as quick as that, it's great fun on a, on a small whip. And there we go, another small roach. And it's been a bite of chuck today for these. Every single put in, uh, there's a big shoal of these roach just sitting on that hemp. Right, so if we look at the side tray, um, we're into the afternoon now, just before packing up really, and you can see there, not used many maggots, with the fish being so small um, at times, I think feeding maggot would have reduced the size even more. So I've continued just to feed the hemp to try and keep a better average stamp of fish in the swim. And as you can see there, from the start, that was nearly full. It's a three pint sub, and I would say there's probably a pint and a half left in that so we fed about a pint and a half of hemp and as you can see conditions have really changed it's dull and overcast and you'd swear it was a different day and that is a lovely fish to finish the blog on let's have a look at the final net right you can probably hear the rain on the trees above us that's my uncle's net of fish pretty much the same tactics um a whip with maggots and hemp and ground bait, plenty of bites and a good day's fishing. Let's have a look at my net. Right, so that's the final net of fish. Be really quick because it's raining. A great day's fishing with plenty of bites and thin perfect roach and a few skimmers. So if you look at the side, it's got to be a good 12 to 15 pound and a great day's fishing. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you all next time. <laughs>